Today I'd like to talk about some modeling preferences when they come to the freeform modeling. So here you can see my final feature is a face blend. If I double click on the face blend, I go back into the actual face blend menu, but how I enter into that face blend menu and what happens to the actual model can be modified within the modeling preferences. So as it stands, if I go into my menu, preferences, modeling, these modeling preferences determine several things as I go through and do my modeling, such as my preset tolerance for the modeling, my tolerant modeling, in other words, uh, my preset densities for bodies, the type of body type, whether it's a solid or a sheet, legacy names, and so on. But what I want to talk about here are in regards to what happens with the freeform modeling. Now, there are certain advanced curve fit methods that you see here. By default, is it a cubic, a quintic, or an advanced? Uh, as well as the rebuild options. If I have a construction type, I, I can set to plane. So if I'm, let's say, creating a surface through an actual, uh, like a bounded plane, it's going to create an actual planar surface type of thing. Or if it has the opportunity to make a plane, it makes a plane. As well as the animation uh, with uh, meshes and uh, anim uh, the, the trend animation and so on and so forth. I don't want to get too deep into these. The one setting that's important that I do want to talk about is this associative freeform editing. And what this does is as I go through and make modifications, let's say I apply an X form, for instance, that X form is going to stay in the part navigator. It's going to become a feature in the tree. So now it is going to become a historically based feature. When I go under edit, by default, you have what's called edit with rollback set. Now, edit with rollback is really good in certain instances. In a lot of instances, when you're doing, I guess, standard modeling, it's kind of handy to be able to roll back the model to its original point in time when that feature was created. And sometimes it can be a bit of a hindrance. So here I'm going to leave it at edit with rollback. And this is what I really wanted to get into, and I'm going to select OK. So within this model, you can see I do have an X form on there. That X form is historically based it's got the parameters because I have that one feature turned on and now if I come in here and double click you'll notice that by double clicking on it I go back into my X form as I've entered into my X form you can see what that shape was when I created that X form you'll also notice that all the other features let me move this out of the way are temporarily hidden, or this is the current object and all of the things are no longer active. Now, like I said, in a lot of instances, this could be very handy. Now I can go in there and make my modifications. But in some instances, this could be uh, detrimental. Maybe I want to see the modifications as they occur. So I'm just going to simply select OK, and now we return to our face blend. For me, when I work, under my preferences for modeling, for my edit, I use I like to use edit parameters. And what this will do, I'm going to select OK, is when I go into my X form at this point, you'll notice that the model stays just the way it is, and all I'm doing is editing the parameters of that feature. So now if I make a modification, I make that, as soon as I release, you'll notice that that face blend updates. Drag this down, release and it updates. If you have a lot of updates going on, then this could take a little bit of time to um, generate and modify and manipulate, but you have, for all intents and purposes, dynamic updates for your model. Now some of the other settings that are important to note menu preferences modeling so here you saw edit parameters and I'm going to go all the way to the end over here under update you'll see here I have dynamic update mode set to incremental 
and I have dynamic update level all. I can set this to first level so only the next uh, feature built after this gets updated so you can get a quick little look. And then I also have what's called continuous. By def for me, I, I set it to incremental here. With continuous, and I'm just going to say set to all for this. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go to my X form. Now when I make a modification, you'll notice that those modifications occur on the fly. So here I have the ability now to make changes quickly and easy dynamically and parametrically. Again, is this something that you're going to do for the entire model, do these kinds of updates? It may, may very well be. I've done this where I have a body side and I have a wheel arch coming down into the body side and I want to make sure I get the flow just right. So I may make some modifications to the body side surface, just little tweaks here and there. And I can watch the lights and the flow of the surface dynamically update until I get exactly what I want. That way I'm not going in back and forth, back and forth. So this is an extremely powerful tool when used correctly. Again, if I have it set to continuous and I have a lot of math built off of those surfaces, it could take a while for it to update. But in this case, it's just a simple fillet. You may have several items stacked up. If your system can handle it, you can run with it. That way you can create your dynamic updates quickly and easily. So today under the menu preferences for the modeling, we see how powerful these modeling preferences are. There are several other preferences and we'll be talking about these in other lectures, but for our sake with an X form, again, depending upon how you want to see your updates occur, continuous, incremental, um, you, can, you can change that. You have your features mark, how far back, forward, so on and so forth uh, for your um, uh, rebuilding of the model as things update. Then again, your edit, double click action. What happens when you double click? Edit with rollback. Um, if you want to get what I just did, you want to make sure that parameters are set. And for under freeform, you want to make sure the associative freeform editing is turned on as well. Thank you.